Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is the fifth episode of the series where I review note-taking apps on the Tablet 6 and in this one we're going to be taking a look at the app Lecture Notes. This is an app that was frequently requested in the comments so I was really interested in seeing what it could offer. If you're also interested in it, there's a giveaway at the end of the video of four $10 gift cards for the Google Play Store. In the last giveaway, there were some confusion, so I want to be clear that what I'm giving away are digital codes for the Google Play Store. Hope that was clear so we can avoid any misunderstandings. And now, let's get into the video. As I was mentioning, this app was brought to my attention by some comments that some of you have made, asking me to review it and give my opinion about it. And I think if I could summarize the app in a few words, I'd say it is the one with the most variety of tools and customizations, not only for when you're writing your notes, but for almost every aspect of the app. Let's start, as always, with its organization. Here, you can create as many folders as you can think of and place your notebooks inside any of them. If you've just installed the app, your notebooks might be looking like this, but there's an option in the settings under display, which you can enable if you like these icons better. Also, while you're in those settings, you can toggle on or off the dark theme. When you try to create a new notebook is when you can probably start getting intimidated by the app, but don't worry. I got you. The first option where it says path is where you can choose where you want to store your notebook. So you can choose any folder you've created. The next one is for you to set the notebook's name. So let me put lecture notes review. And there's an option for you to use the timestamp as the name if that's something you like. Then there's an option for you to choose the width and height for the paper. And if you tap the question mark icon, you can get the pixel values of some common paper sizes. In my case, I'm going to use the recommended paper size for an A4. And it's important to clarify that the recommended pixels that the app gives are related to the screen of your device. So don't worry if you're not using the Tablet 6 and you're seeing different values on the app. The next option is for you to choose the default zoom of the page and if you want to initially enable or disable the zoom. And I say initially because that's something that can easily be changed once you're inside the notebook. After this, you can choose which paper pattern you want to use. There's a plain option, ruled, checkered, and image if you want to have it as a background, which is important because you cannot be moving around. It is stuck to the design of the paper. Additional to those, there's a custom option that we're going to see in just a second, but the paper pattern you choose can have different sizes, and that's really useful because it's difficult to create a template that all people can use. So no matter which one you like, you can always customize it further for it to be designed specifically the way you want it. We are not going to get into the text layer settings right now because I think it can be kind of confusing. Instead, we're going to see these three color customization options at the bottom, which are used to choose the color of the page, the color of the pattern, and the color of the cover of the notebook. The one thing you cannot fully customize is the bookmark icon that's on top of the notebook. It automatically chooses the complementary color of the cover. Now, there's this custom option on the paper pattern that basically gets rid of the need for any paper templates and gives you the possibility to create any pattern you can think of. The only limit is your knowledge on JavaScript code because that's basically how you create these custom patterns. As you're seeing, Lecture Notes provides multiple examples of pre-built codes that are even designed for specific languages like Spanish, Korean, Italian, which is crazy. Once you finish customizing the looks of your notebook, you can start seeing the tools that the app offers for your writing experience. If you just install the app, your notebook is going to be different, so I'm going to be mentioning what I did for it to look like this while explaining the tools and their functionality. First of all, if you want to see all the tools, you can do it by going to settings, menu and disabling the hiding option for each of them. I'm going to explain these tools and you can decide which are essentials to your note taking and need to stay on your toolbar. Also, you can choose the icon width from normal, narrow and very narrow, which comes handy if you don't have too much room to work with on your screen. And before we leave the settings, if you want to have your toolbar exactly like mine's, you have to enable the six options. The first four are needed if you want the icon of the app to display a drop down menu whenever you tap it and the other two disable some text around the page that I personally find unnecessary. Once we go back to our notes, the first tool we can use is the pencil. The idea behind it is that there are four standard colors that you cannot change, and there are 18 other ones which you can completely customize. At first, you don't have this toolbox, so if you want to enable it, you can tap the pen icon and then the show pencil toolbox option. With this toolbox, it's easier to explain the pencil functionality. As I was mentioning, there are four standard colors, black, red, green, and blue, each one with three different sizes. The next 18 are the ones you can fully customize by choosing the custom pencil setting. 
Here you can select which pencil you want to customize if you want to change their names, modify their color, line width, opacity, and softness. Personally, I do not modify the softness. I have it to the lowest because it blurs the line and I don't like that. If we go down, we can enable pressure or velocity sensitivity that depends on your stylus and your preferences. You can also choose if you want your pencil to be direction dependent and customize the direction is going to depend on if it draws flat lines at the end in case you want a more styled line, if it draws behind other colors which is used for highlighters, in my case I have one configured already and it works to create the highlight effect behind the regular ink. You can also choose if the pencil is an eraser, there's already a tool dedicated to it, but this can be used if you want to hide the eraser icon and use this custom pencil instead. Finally, there are layers within your notes, which can have multiple purposes, but you can choose in which specific layer the pencil is going to write on. I remember the first time I saw this page, I was extremely confused, so don't worry if you are, you'll get the hang of it as you use it. There are a couple of things I've said for my toolbox, and I think the most important ones are display custom pencils, and I have it to the maximum number available, display color selector. I had also enabled the opacity selector, but I didn't really use it, so I ended up removing it. Display line width selector with the logarithmic scale, because I to use really low width so this scale is way more useful. Display the standard and custom drawing tools which we're going to discuss in a moment and I have it to the 75% size and sometimes I enable the thicker box which gives you a little more visibility for the color and line width selectors. With these two options I make that when I double tap any custom pencil I can go to the quick customization menu and this last one allows me to do the same but with custom drawing tools. There are two other things I wanna show you about the writing experience of the app. We can access the first one by going to the input settings and there are five different writing options for you to choose. This is caused by the wide variety of Android devices that this app can be used on and it's a way the developers have found of ensuring that all or at least almost all users can interact with it. The first one is for devices with a dedicated stylus as the Tab 6. The second one is for devices that are not designed with a stylus but can make use of a third party one. For this one you can configure the sensitivity but it's only supposed to work with some devices. If it doesn't work, you can always choose the heuristic palm rejection, which is supposed to work on devices with a passive stylus. With this one, you can configure the delay and if you're going to use it with your left or your right hand. However, this option disables the single and double finger gestures while you're using the pencil, but you can always use the hand tool to make use of them. If none of these options work for you, you can make use of the fifth one, which creates a safe zone on the screen where you can rest your palm without interfering with the writing experience. Finally, the fourth option creates a zoomed box on the screen that you can use to write with more precision while still being able to look at the entire or the majority of the page. You can customize this input zone. First, we have the size you're going to give it for landscape and portrait orientation. If you want to display buttons, which ones you want to display and their size. If you want the zoom box to be opaque or translucent, if you want to have an icon to show and hide the writing space, and if you want to have a safe zone when the input zone is hidden. Now this is important because at the moment this input method is primarily designed for passive stylus capacities. So when you hide this writing box, your finger is recognized as an input method. But according to the developers, the next update will improve the handling of an active stylus like the S Pen, along with two new style options for the pencil toolbox. So we just have to wait for the update. Date. You can customize the direction in which you're writing and if you're using an active stylus to write on the box. You can also customize the size of the step that the box takes when you tap the arrows. You can choose to enable a two finger gestures which will allow you to move the box with two fingers. Also the first time you enable this input method, the box moves every time you write. I don't like that at all. But thankfully you can disable it and instead enable a position dependent movement. This is going to make that when you reach a given percentage, there's going to appear a translucent rectangle that when you write on it, it's going to displace the box. You can configure how much you want it to be displayed to the right, when the box is going to appear, its width, and if you wanted to create a new line when you reach the end of the page. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little confused the first time I used this input method, and I was sure they made a mistake because I thought I needed to go back for it to move and continue writing, but I recently found out that you have to write on top of the existing writing and it moves by itself without affecting your previous notes. However, I think it's not properly designed for new lines. I don't know, I have tried many combinations for it, 
and it's really tiring to go to the settings, change some properties, go back to your notes, write a couple of things, see it's not working and repeat the cycle. So hopefully someone in the comments can correct me and tell me I'm doing something wrong because I haven't found a way for it to work properly. Thankfully, if you were paying attention, I told there were two things I wanted to show you. The input methods were the first one and the second one is called auto scroll. When you enable it, you set boundaries across your page and when you reach them, the page automatically adjusts for you to continue writing. I have set right and bottom boundaries, giving it the possibility to include a new line or a new page when I read the end of the one I'm using. I've also set a small delay because it happened to me that I was sometimes writing a word that ended with T and I had to finish writing the letter, right? So when it had no delay, it automatically moved further, but now it works perfectly and I can say it's one of my favorite features of the app. Now let's quickly talk about the other tools that you can make use of. The first one that's next to the pencil, it's the eraser. You can set it to seven different sizes and it erases this specific spot where you use it. I don't have any complaints about it, I just wish it could be set to erase the entire stroke for when you want to erase highlights. Next we have the keyboard mode in case you also want to have some typed text on your notes. Then we have the selection tool which can be either a rectangle or a freeform. It is really precise and grabs everything inside the lines it creates. Once you've made a selection you can deselect it with the X icon, you can also duplicate it or if you want you can change its color to the color of the last pencil you were using. In case you have some highlights on your notes, you can choose the keep opacity option and it changes the colors but keeps the highlight effect. You can also color the entire selection, the outside of the selection, or you can clear everything outside the selection you made. If you tap the scissors icon, you can imagine it as if you've literally cut it off. You can move it around, rotate it, resize it, or delete it. Next, there's the hand option if you don't want the S Pen or your stylus to mark your notes. There's also a pointer tool that places an arrow or really any other icon you set it to on the screen whenever you tap it. On the right side of the pointer, we have the drawing tools icon, which are the same ones that appear on the pencil toolbox, so let me use that to explain it better. There are six standard drawing tools, so kind of similar to the pencils, but the difference is within the custom drawings. There are some default ones that you can choose to include on your pencil toolbox, but what's interesting is that in the same way as with the paper pattern, you can use a JavaScript code to create a new custom drawing. There are a lot of drawings for you to see their code and analyze them if you want to create your own. There's also a zoom tool with some default values if you prefer that over the two fingers gestures. Next to it, we have the layers. With it, you can create up to three different layers, each one independent from the others, and you can choose which one you're going to be working on, you can merge them, remove them, or even decide which ones to display. The next tools are used to undo and redo some of the things you've done. The redo comes hidden by default, so make sure you enable it if you're constantly making use of it. On the final set of tools, we have two icons that helps us move between pages. There's a tool for inserting a new page after one you're on, and the regular tool to insert a new page at the end of your notes. If you tap the next icon, it's like when you hit the enter on your keyboard, it vertically moves the page for you to continue with your notes. The camera icon lets you take a picture to include it in your notebook, but if you want to include one that's on your gallery, you can use the import image option. You can share your notes either as a PDF, a zip file, or an image, and you can choose if you want to share the entire page you're on, a specific layer of the page, or the complete notebook. Hopefully, in the future, they add the possibility to choose multiple pages to export because I think there are some scenarios where you have to export two or more pages from the same notebook and it would be beneficial to have the tools available to do it. That basically sums up the tools for your notebook. I gotta say, I like the customization you get over almost every single thing, but I also admit that it can be intimidating or tedious to get the version of the app that you like. Regarding the writing experience, it's not my favorite. I think the ink it's exactly or almost the exact input the app receives there's nothing wrong with it but it will make a huge difference if it went through a filter that made it more visually pleasing however i can understand that it can probably compromise the performance of the app which taking into consideration all the things that it runs and all the variables that any user can change, the performance of the app is incredible. I've never noticed any lag or delay when writing. If you do feel some kind of lag that's affecting your writing experience, you can enable the predictive handwriting, which is supposed to compensate for the latency caused by the device. I 
personally don't use it because it creates a moving line in front of what you're writing and that distracts me more than it should. As I think the most unique characteristics about lecture notes it, its organization, let me explain to you some of the most interesting settings you can customize or enable within the app. First we have fast rendering which in case you've just installed the app you should 100% enable it because it creates a smoother experience when navigating through your notes but because it's processing things fast it also makes your writing look more pixelated if you get really close to it. You can also dim or hide the navigation bar when you're writing your notes. There's also a auto blackboard mode which replaces the standard black pencil by a white one when you set a dark paper color. The next setting is use back key for undo, which is a feature that I've really enjoyed. To me, it's now almost natural to use the back gesture when I'm trying to undo something. Allow free page floating, which is something so simple but so useful especially for having more freedom when writing in the boundaries of the page of your notes autosave because you never know what weird error can come up and ruin your entire study session export setup that lets you create a template for exporting your notes to any app you've got installed and configure what you want in the exported file and finally there's this setting called widget setup which is something i found really useful you put any notebook you want on on your home screen and you can quickly start taking notes just by tapping it. Unfortunately, there's no cloud backup or syncing offered by lecture notes, but if you're planning on using it on multiple devices, you can make use of an app called Folder Sync. I'm not going to go deep into what the app can do, just let me show you how you can configure it. You need to have the app on both devices and add your preferred cloud service. In my case, I'm using Google Drive. Then you have to create a folder pair in which you have to choose if the device is going to send the files to the cloud, if it's going to receive the files from the cloud and store them on your device's memory, or if it's going to do both. In my case, I only write my notes on the Tab 6, so I have it to send the files to the cloud and on my phone, and I have it to receive and store the files from the cloud. You can set it to do an automatic sync or you can do it manually if you prefer. You have to specify which folder from the cloud and from your device you're going to use. By default, you can find the lecture notes folder under Android, data, lecture notes, and files. This path is the one you should be using as the local folder. I've used it a couple of times and I've never gotten any errors. The notebooks are stored on the cloud perfectly and I can restore them on my phone without any problems. As we're talking about about additional apps, Lecture Notes actually complements itself with other apps created by the SEM developers. There's one for PDFs called PDF View, which is completely free and is the one responsible for handling PDFs within Lecture Notes. There's another one called Lecture Presentations that is a screencast extension meant to help you present your notes while still being able to write on them. And there are two other ones called Lecture Recordings and Lecture Videos one designed to help you record audios while you're taking your notes and the other one designed to record the audio and the video of the screen while you're taking your notes. In my personal opinion, I'd say the most useful one is lecture recordings, the one that records audios, because the other two are actually features that the Tavi 6 already has. You can record your screen with the audio from your mic with the screen recorder as well as screencast the device with SmartView. Maybe you could consider buying the extensions if you're using another device that doesn't offer this features. But the good thing is that with the giveaway we're doing, it's up to you what to buy in the Play Store. I want to clarify again that the giveaway is of four gift cards for the Google Play Store, so only Android users. And to participate, all you need to do is to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and comment your Instagram username when you're done. The giveaway ends in a week after this video is published, and I'm going to be announcing the winners on my Instagram stories the day after. As a final message, there's a trial version of the app which has all the tools and all the features, but you can only have two notebooks with eight pages each. And it's useful if you're debating if you want to buy the app or not. Good luck to every person participating. Thank you very much to Lecture Notes for helping me with the giveaway. This has been a regular teenager. Take care. Peace.